those of you who don't know me, my name is Dr. Heather Hirsch. I am a North American Menopause Society physician, which means that I specialize in taking care of women in perimenopause and menopause. I currently work as a lead physician at the Menopause and Midlife Clinic at the Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston, Massachusetts. And as I am making this video for you, we are currently under the social distancing orders, meaning I am at my home. And the reason I'm at home is I have actually been doing some telemedicine visits, uh, again, right here from home. I'm so excited you have come to my channel. Please like and subscribe and hit that bell so that you get all of my videos as soon as they come out. I am so excited to see this channel starting to grow. And so I actually have plans to get a new setup and a camera, but because of the constraints on ordering and things like that, Right now, I'm still just using my cell phone, so hold out and hopefully we'll get a little bit better quality videos really soon coming right your way. So today I wanted to make a video on what is the best type of hormone therapy for you. Now I'm going to do another video on the safety and efficacy of hormone replacement therapy in the next video, hopefully later this week. But this video, I want to start out with what is the best type of hormone therapy for you? Here is a fun fact. We actually say hormone replacement therapy a lot in the media, and that is, you know, the short term is HRT, you've probably heard of. And HRT, when it's actually considered replacement, is really for when you have menopause before age 40, and then we use the term hormone therapy, or HT, if you are taking hormone replacement after natural menopause, which is typically about age 51 and a half. So just a fun fact for you to know. So hormone therapy, especially when taken within 10 years of menopause um, for women who have no known contraindications to estrogen replacement, is really shown to be very safe and effective despite really years of research to the contrary of the idea that estrogen is dangerous and harmful. So again, estrogen therapy or hormone replacement therapy, if you're under age 40 or hormone therapy if your you know, average age of menopause really is quite safe and it is very efficacious when given within 10 years of your last menstrual period. And we're gonna get into that again in the next video. But a lot of you ask me, what is the best type? Is it oral, is it a patch, is it bioidentical? What is the best type of hormone replacement therapy? So let's go ahead and get into that. Okay, number one. You do want to make sure that your hormone replacement therapy or hormone therapy is FDA approved, okay? Now, if it's FDA approved, that means that you are probably getting it at your local pharmacy, whether it's, you know, CVS or it's the drugstore or it's the supermarket that has the pharmacy in it. That means that what you're getting is FDA approved. If it's non FDA approved, you may be getting this or you're probably getting it at a compounding pharmacy. The reason I only recommend FDA approved products is because we know we can study them. We know exactly what's in them. We know exactly what dose you are getting. So you want to make sure it is FDA approved. A lot of this confusion starts around the idea of getting a bioidentical estrogen. And all that really means is that it's estradiol. Bioidentical is actually a slang term. It just means estradiol. Estradiol can be given very, very easily in FDA approved products. And examples of that is just plain old estradiol. You can get estradiol in an oral tab that you take uh, once a day or twice a day. You can get it in a combined tab with or without progesterone, and that is considered bioidentical. Now, is bioidentical really safer? You know, I don't say I would necessarily agree to that. So, to give you a uh, example, Premarin, which is conjugated equine estrogen, yes, which comes from horses, is not considered bioidentical. But in all the studies, when we look at its safety and its efficacy, it is really, really quite safe, especially when given within 10 years of menopause to women who have no known contraindications to estrogen replacement. So I love if my patients are happy to take Premarin. I very happily prescribe it. Now, but if you do want a bioidentical, I can give you an FDA approved bioidentical option that you don't have to get from a compounding pharmacy. 
Compounding pharmacies are unregulated and they're just quite frankly unnecessary when we have the great safety data of the FDA approved products. Bioidentical, uh, or sorry, compounded bioidentical products are also usually much more expensive and we can't control or really know how much of a dose you're getting meaning you could be getting too much of a dose, you could be getting too low of a dose, and this is a really big problem. So again, all points to you want to make sure you're taking an FDA approved product, whether it's conjugated equine estrogen, which is something like Premarin, or if it's an estradiol based estrogen, that they're both really, really fine. In my opinion, it's really then up to you. Okay, so again, you want to get something that is FDA approved. So number two, should you take it orally or a patch or another transdermal route? So this is uh, where the individualization of you and hormone therapy comes into play. So as a general rule, I really say there is no one size that fits all. And this is when a visit with me is super important because we can really get down to what's going to be best for you. But if I'm going to try and generalize it for this video, I will go ahead and do my best. When I see you in the office, I start with getting your entire history. So I want to know what medications are you currently taking? Do you have any medical conditions or chronic conditions such as high blood pressure, diabetes? Maybe you have an autoimmune condition like lupus or you have some other kind of antiphospholipid antibody syndrome. Maybe you have hyper or hypothyroidism. All of those things I really want to know. I also want to know your surgical history. Have you had any surgeries before? I also want to know your obstetrical history. Have you had any pregnancies? Have you had any miscarriages? Did you have any um, pregnancy complications such as gestational diabetes, gestational hypertension, postpartum depression? Those are all really important to me when my brain is kind of calculating what is going to be the best for you. I also want to know, have you been on birth control before? Have you taken estrogen containing medications before? such as oral uh, combined estrogen progesterone birth control pills. Maybe you've been on a birth control patch. All of those things are really helpful for me to know. Then I want to know, okay, what? Uh, sim when was your last menstrual period? How long has it been since your last menstrual period? Or perhaps you're perimenopausal and you might say, well, I'm still having periods. They're very sparse. Maybe I'll get one every three to four to five months. Then I want to know, what are your top symptoms? This is different for everybody. And I want to know not only your top symptoms, but also what symptom matters the most to you. So for example, a lot of women will have, you know, very classic hot flashes, uh, vaginal dryness, pain with intercourse, changes in their libido and their sexual function that is problematic to their self-esteem and their marriage. Um, I hear very commonly brain fog, trouble with memory recall and working at work, being productive. I hear very common trouble sleeping. Maybe it's anxiety. Maybe it's new symptoms like onset of dizziness, which we call vertigo any type of symptom, I want to know what symptoms you have, how long they've lasted, and then what is your number one? Very commonly, these don't match. Often they do, but again, sometimes they don't. Here's an example. I had a very wonderful patient say my hot flashes are terrible, but the thing I care about the most is my sexual function because I really, really care about my marriage and I really, really want that back. And so I kind of calculate that into what is going to be the best for you. Now, if you have basically, if you're very healthy, you don't have any chronic medical conditions, you don't have any metabolic sim symptoms, uh, syndrome, such as a combination of high blood pressure, diabetes, and cholesterol issues, you're overall really healthy, you don't take a lot of medications, you can really take anything that you want. Also, you're a great candidate for either oral, a patch, a spray, or a gel of FDA approved estrogen, whether it's estradiol, whether it's conjugated estrogen. And then it really just comes down to your preference. Some women say, you know, I would rather just take a pill. I don't, you know, I don't have a problem with that. I can remember. And that is the route that we tend to go. I do have some patients that say, I really don't 
like taking medications. Uh, maybe I'm a, a shift worker, I'm a nurse. I'd rather just put a patch on, not have to think about it for a week or it comes in a week or it comes in every uh, uh, three and a half days. I'd rather just put that patch on, not have to think about changing it, and then we'll go with the patch. Some people also do like the idea of a gel that they can just go up one pump, two pump, rub it in and then not have to think about it after that. And so it really depends on you and your preference. Now, some women do have metabolic syndrome at baseline. Maybe you have a little bit of high blood pressure. Maybe you have, um, you're have you on a statin medication for your cholesterol. Maybe your A1C is creeping up, which means you have prediabetes or diabetes. And therefore, I do recommend a transdermal option. That's gonna avoid first pass metabolism, where when you take a medication, it goes to your liver and it gets metabolized. It fights with all the other medications that you're taking. So it's really nice if you do put the patch on. It just gets absorbed without having to go through your liver. Another example where a patch is really helpful is uh, if you've had any type of bypass surgery, like gastric bypass, if you don't absorb medications well, for example, if you have Crohn's disease or other types of um, gastrointestinal, gastrointestinal, blah, malabsorption issues, a patch is also, or a spray, a gel is a really good option. Very commonly we'll toggle these and we'll go back and forth. Some people will find that they will like the one that they started with. Some people will find that they want to switch. For example, I had a nurse who started with a patch. Unfortunately, it gave her skin a little bit of a rash and it was quite irritating. So she ultimately then switched to an oral because she just really couldn't handle having the rash. That's of course not fun. So sometimes there is some trial and error. Now, the reason I don't recommend a patch for everyone is because not one size fits all. So there is some data showing that the risk of a blood clot is even lower if you use a patch versus a oral. And that is true. The risk, of the rare risk of a blood clot is the biggest risk with hormone therapy. Now, this risk is lower than when you were on birth control pills. If you were, this risk is lower than when you were pregnant, if you were ever pregnant in your lifetime. So the risk of a blood clot does tend to get overestimated, but it is not zero. When the data came out that the patch lowered the risk of DVT, sorry, if you can hear my dog barking, when the data came out that the risk of the patch lowered the risk of blood clots even more than the oral. Everyone started to give everyone a patch, but it just really is not one size fits all. Very, very commonly my patients take their oral medications. They're very satisfied. They can remember them every day and it gives them a nice sort of every 24 hour steady dose of their medication. So it really, really depends. Again, it depends on your past medical history. If you've, um, you know, your pregnancy and your surgical histories are all little kind of micro calculations, little stress tests that you have, you know, done that give me information on what's gonna be the best for you your top symptoms, and then uh, what is your priorities? And those all kind of help me calculate. For example, again, I said priorities. We know that oral is sometimes better for hair. It's sometimes better for mood. And those, again, can be based on what are your top health priorities at menopause and midlife. So that's all I have for you today. Please send me any questions or comments below. So for example, you know, if that was anything was confusing or you want me to get into something a little bit more, please do let me know. And later this week, I'm gonna come out with the safety of hormone therapy so that you can feel as comfortable as I do when I go to bed at night knowing that my patients are gonna be really safe on their hormone replacement therapy. Don't forget to also follow me on Instagram. I'm at hormone.health.doc. You can follow me also on Twitter at Heather Hirsch MD. And if you do want to get information about my menopause course, that is linked below. It is a wonderful, wonderful option. It will give you all of this detail even further. So it will really break down how do you know when hormone therapy is right for you, which are sometimes the best. But again, remember, it is not direct medical advice and it is always best if you can have a doctor that you can see in the office who can help you decide together. Okay, that is all for now. Have a great rest of the week and day, guys. Bye-bye.